And we rejoin you at the Schoberg Flynn Arena on the campus of St. Thomas Academy in Mendota Heights. I'm Mike Peden, all by myself, talking to myself. Our next game in the Twin Cities Thanksgiving tip-off features a Class A contender and a Class 2A dark horse. The Winona Cotter Ramblers, 15-5 and five a year ago, and the Mary Lutheran Crusaders, a participant in the Class A state tournament, knocked out in the quarterfinal round by Sleepy Eye St. Mary's. Those two in the same section this year, so that's going to add a fun wrinkle to that rivalry, but Mayor Lutheran, if you've watched our coverage on our YouTube channel, you're going to recognize a lot of names if you tuned in for any of our volleyball games, and that is because most of the volleyball roster crosses over into basketball. Three of the starters two weeks ago claimed the state championship in Class A, Julia Carnes, Madeline Getzko, and Emma Laid. And you also have Lily Wachholz, who will be playing Division I Volleyball at Iowa State. So this Mayor Lutheran team, they have some tough opponents in their season. There you've got Providence Academy later in the year. They'll play Mountain Iron Buell. They will continue their series with Minnehaha Academy and their rivalry with Concordia Academy. Those two have always played each other in volleyball and have resumed it for basketball. But Mayor Lutheran, one of the perennials, no matter the sport in Class A, football and volleyball both reached the state tournament this year. But this is game one. And I had a chance to speak with Chris Gustin, the athletic director and head coach for Mayor Lutheran Girls Basketball earlier this week. And he noted how it's a transition when you go from the high of winning state volleyball and then have to refocus for basketball. But having that multi-sport experience comes in handy. And Mayor Lutheran being a Class A school, that's the norm. They just don't have the numbers to specialize like you see in some bigger schools. And you know what I always say, do it all. You're only in high school one time. So take up as many sports as you can. So the starters have been introduced. We'll recap them for you. Mayor Lutheran will start Emma Laid, Julia Carnes, Riley Nuremberg, Madeline Getzko, and Danica Martin. Winona Cotter will start Sarah Speltz, Megan Morgan, Madison Hoselton, Ava Killian, and Sophia Sancork. This is game one for both teams. But we will brief you as we move along. We can tell you that Emma Laid led the team in scoring, Mayor Lutheran that is last year, 18 points per game. And earlier this year, had 2,000 career assists in volleyball. Winona Cotter won the tip though, and missing the three was Ava Killian. It's a battle of section two teams in different classes, of course. Well, I take that back. One of them is in section two. The other one is in section one. Winona Cotter located in Winona and Mayor Lutheran located in Mayor. You probably already knew that, but in case you're a first time viewer, because I never know who's watching my games on YouTube. That's going to be a foul on number 35, Sophia Sancork. She got a little too grabby there with Danica Martin. Now, we spoke of all the volleyball crossovers for Mayor Lutheran, but Danica Martin, not a name who played in basketball. However, Chris Gustin highlighted her progression between last year and this year, and he had a conversation with Danica where he said, what got into you in a positive way? And she said, I'm tired of sitting on the bench. So she really gets after it. Keep an eye for number 24. And Emma Lay, no slouch either. We got to see her play volleyball a couple of times. That thriller with Southwest Christian, who ended up being upset by Mountains Park Academy in the quarterfinal round in Class 2A. Here's Sarah Speltz. As the Ramblers 
led by Pat Bolin, his son, a coach himself, Rogers, Tatino Grace, now he's in the D1 ranks. Three on the way for Winona Cotter and they get on the board. Megan Morgan knocks down the triple. Megan Morgan was tabbed as a player to watch. One of the big names for Winona Cotter. At least if you subscribe to the breakdown book as I do. And with some of these teams that I haven't seen before, Winona Cotter, one of them, it's a lot of catching up to do. Three ball. Unable to hit was Getzko. MLA will try for three, and a second trance triple for the Crusaders. So we start with back-to-back -back threes. Morgan, the leading scorer among returning players, 15.9 for the Ramblers. Gets her own rebound, tries to put it back, or I should say got the rebound off the miss from Hoselton. Now they'll go to the other end, and missing the corner three was Sophia Sancourt. Laid. To Getzko. And I'll say this, Mayor Lutheran has some depth when you've got the starting five and Lily Wachholz is not one of them. She's on the bench. The big volleyball star, but it's Sarah Speltz looking for a starring role, and that steal and score will get her one step closer. Winona Okada with a 5-3 lead. Mary Lutheran struggling a little bit on the fast break. They do settle things down a bit, at least get it off to Emma, and she draws the foul on Speltz. So Mayor Lutheran playing some of the top schools in Class A. And a pair of state tournament contenders in 2A in Minnehaha Academy and Providence Academy. Unable to get the save was Madison Hoselton. Another scramble for the ball, won by the Crusaders. High low play is good. Carnes to Nuremberg and Riley will have a chance for three. Riley, the 5-4 senior, a pesky defender and a smart player. In the words of Chris Gustin, her ability to pressure the other team's primary ball handler makes our team better. And this Mayor Lutheran team brings back a lot of experience. They only lost one player to graduation from last year's group. Durenberg completes the three-point play and the Crusaders take an early 6-5 lead. And we say early because there's a long way to go. And Ava Killian cuts her way inside for two. Getzko. Nice move to the rim. Getzko did a little bit of everything for the volleyball team this fall and hoping to do the same in basketball. Now, even though I don't see these two teams often, in fact, I've never covered with Nona Cotter before, I do have one advantage thanks to covering volleyball because of all the volleyball crossovers. I don't have to worry about memorizing names. And Mayor Lutheran, they do a fantastic job memorizing plays. Madeline gets go to the line for two. Gets go, the 5'11 wing. Average 9.8 points, 4.1 rebounds per game last year. The youngest in her class and she is scared of ladybugs. Wonder what that's about. Also plays volleyball as you had a chance to see in our TSB television coverage. And a member of the National Honor Society. Chris Gustin calls her a gifted score with great length and athleticism. Score from the outside, she can slash the bucket and defensively her length can make things difficult. 
for the opposing team, that is. Gets go splits at the line. And that makes it 9-7. Long way to go. Pat Bolin, I talked to him briefly, and he said Mayor Lutheran has length, so that's going to be something Winona Connor has to get around, but he says he plans to give them hell, if I'm allowed to say that. Well, it's my YouTube channel. Of course I can say that. Lily Wachholz missed the jumper. Mayor Lutheran got the offensive rebound. Winona Cotter on the run, and they will get the fast break finish. Megan Morgan with the bucket. Laid. They run a triangle set. That's Stella Moss, another volleyball crossover. Stella Cousins with the Wachholzes. Lily's sister, Gabby, does not play basketball, but that's all right. Her volleyball acumen, highly welcomed. Same for Emma Laid, who gets the 13-foot runner to fall. 11-9, Mary Lutheran leads. Winona Cotter, a little short-handed today, several players out, so only nine suiting up. Usually that's enough to get you through a game. When you get to eight, that's when you start getting into that danger zone, which happens sometimes in the AAU circuit, less so in the high school game. Avery Studer out there for the Crusaders, she wears number 25. And the Crusaders taking some time off the clock. But we said this before, the longer you run a set, the more chances you have of running into trouble. And that's not to say that these teams aren't capable of running extended sets, but the defense starts to key in. And Megan Morgan doing just that, getting the steal and drawing the foul. The Ramblers sending a couple of reserves in. Haley Bizance is one of them. She wears number 20. Winona Cotter in trouble, so Pat Bolin will call a timeout. First of the game. And they have not been kept track of on the board, so. We'll just have to keep track as best as we can. Mayor Lutheran. They are the favorites to get out of their section, or one of them, I should say, Sleepy Eye St. Mary's. It could be a toss-up between those two. Mini Yoda is one of the teams, Mountain Iron Buell. They are the front runners to win the Class A state championship, but Class A can be unpredictable. Mini Yoda, they've won three times, but we haven't had a repeat winner in a long time. And for Winona Cotter, Lake City, Goodhue, and Rochester Lourde. Those are gonna be the teams they have to contend with. Rochester Lourde, they had a strong team. Could have won it in 2020, but the pandemic canceled the tournament and we didn't know much about it compared to what we do now. And so, if you could go back in time and rerun it, who knows, but we're not able to do that.
Winona Connor in trouble and they cough it up. Mayor Lutheran takes over. 10.08 remains in the first half. Here's Laid. The long skip to Avery Studer and Mayor Lutheran runs into traffic. They cough it up to Winona Cotter. Ramblers with the series of quick skips and they draw the foul. No, well, actually, they lost it. I thought there was a foul call, but nope, they lost the ball instead. So Mayor Luther enforces the turnover. I stand corrected. Here's Stella Moss to Madeline Gets Go. Blade was looking for Wachholz. That was a common setup in the volleyball season with Lay being the setter and Wachholz being that do everything hitter. Now they go the opposite direction as Lay got the inbound to Wachholz who fed it right back to Lay. So a quick little pinball set, I guess is what you call it, but it pays off for Laid who scored. She's up to seven. And the Crusaders take a 13-9 lead with 9.05 to go in the first half. Emma Laid ripped the ball out from the hands of number 25. We'll get her name in a moment. Emma Laid following the play and getting the second chance bucket. Number 25 is Kata Thrynan. Three ball, no good, and laid with the rebound. Here is a chance for the Crusaders to pull ahead. Fifteen nine, eight thirty five to go in the first half. Mayor Lutheran tried to go inside and it almost backfired as 22, Madison Hazelton. Was able to intercept. 15 was Alyssa Williams. I think I got my names crossed there. Nice move to the elbow by Megan Morgan, but nothing doing. But at the very least, we've got our names and numbers straightened out. And that's the important thing. Seven and a half minutes to go. It's the first game, it's the first day of the year for all these teams, so there's gonna be some opening day jitters. Some from the players and some from the broadcasters, especially from the broadcasters. When you do a, multiple games in a day, but that's okay. Julia Carnes taking the feed from Getzko. Three on the way. No good, but Sancork follows her own shot. 
They swing it back out, hesitation. Now Megan Morgan fires the three, and I don't know if that hesitation move helped her out there, but Mary Lutheran looking to make something out of it. Kickball, and it will go to Mayor Lutheran, 6.53 to go in the first half. Game one out of a possible 32. Nothing will be decided today. All that's at stake is adding a few more points. Rebounds, assists to your record, and that was an improv move. Nice hustle play to get the offensive rebound by Danica Martin after Carnes was in a little bit of trouble. Now Getzko tried to drive, got tied up. Mayor Lutheran went with the arrow, so they keep it, 6.30 to go. Gustin in his 16th season 259 wins in the prior 15. And that includes the pandemic shortened year. On the other end, Pat Bolin, he's been at this a long time. He's in his 39th season. 635 wins, 354 losses, but you're gonna lose a few when you coach basketball, even when you're Hopkins. A couple of state tournament trips on the resume for Pat Bullen and Chris Gustin. Making his first state tournament appearance since he took over as head coach last year. Mary Lutheran on the run, and Stella Moss with the finish in transition. The Crusaders building a run here. An 8-0 run, extending the lead to 10, 19-9. Another scramble, another tie-up. Winona Potter with the arrow this time. Nope, it was Mary Lutheran. The arrow points to the Crusaders. Winona Cotter brought the pressure, but they can't get the finish, and that's what you gotta do when you get those steals, as Alice, Alyssa Williams just did. And that just hurts, that's a four point swing, because on the other end, Julia Carnes converts the turnaround, Mayor Lutheran with the steal off the inbound. Emma Laid looking to add to Mayor Lutheran's lead, and she will. That is a huge swing. Alyssa Williams missed the fast break play for Winona Cotter after they forced a turnover. Mayor Lutheran scores on the other end, and then they get a steal and another bucket. That's a six point swing. So you're looking at a 14 point deficit. What could have been eight? Emma Laid, though. What a start she is having. 11 points in this one, 18 points per game last year. Donated 10 inches of her hair to Locks of Love. And her volleyball career is done with over 2,000 assists and a state tournament title. Also plays softball and a member of the National Honor Society. Chris Gustin considers Emma one of the smartest players he has ever had. And this may not be the case today, but he did say in a situation if they need a big bucket, chances are they'll put the ball in her hands. Three on the way for Winona Cotter. It does not fall for Williams. Emma Laid 
Bates speeding her way down court, but Winona Cotter was set up in time. That was Williams, and that's something you want to see if you're Pat Bullen or any other coach. You're not always going to make the shot, but if you can get back on defense, make a play as Williams did, get herself in position, got the stop. Matt Olive stopping play. Looks like a safety check. So a momentary pause with 4.50 to go. That's not the strangest stoppage of play I've seen this season. We had an extended one in volleyball to wipe up a wet spot in that Southwest Christian Mayor Lutheran game. And speaking of wet spots, Ava Killian making a splash with that three-pointer. That's her first triple. And a much-needed bucket for Winona Cotter as they try to rally back. Mary Lutheran still leads 23-12. And Laid hit with a five second call. Five seconds isn't all that much and it was a little quicker than I thought. But five seconds is five seconds. Winona Cotter getting another stop. Williams used up the dribble, looking for help, finds it, three ball. Killian can't hit that one. Laid, poked from behind. Megan Morgan all alone. And you know what happens in that scenario. An easy steal and run out for the Ramblers. Mayor Lutheran with a quick answer on the other end. Gets go. Floats it in. Morgan again, speeding her way to the bucket and draws the foul. Megan Morgan up to nine, looking to make it 10 on the free throw. Morgan averaged over 20 points per game in the final seven games of the year. 15.9, seven rebounds, 3.9 assists. 43% from three point range, 84.5 from the charity stripe. When she's not playing basketball, she enjoys paddle boarding and water skiing on Cross Lake, and I think I may have jinxed her on the free throw numbers, but the Ramblers bring pressure, and lead Mary Lutheran to cough it up. So the Ramblers, who trail by 14, getting a lifeline here and trying to make the most of it. Bizons to Morgan for three. Bullseye. 43% from three point range. That's not too shabby. Oh, who am I kidding? That's outstanding. Mayor Lutheran hit with the offensive foul. Gets go colliding with Megan Morgan. And that's the second time where we've seen a player take a shot in offense and make her miss, get back on defense, and that's gonna be enough for Chris Gustin to call a timeout. So the Crusaders, led by 14, Winona Cotter trimming that margin to six, 25-19. 10-2 run for Winona Cotter. And Megan Morgan, a big reason for that, she has 12 of Winona Cotter's 19 points. Mayor Lutheran felt they were poised for another successful season. Some other big names for the Crusaders, Maya Shimaleski. She holds the school record for career points and steals. And another fun fact about Winona Cotter, Gabby Bolin, one of eight players to score 1,000 points. Three-point shooting and solid defense, Pat Bolin believes are the biggest strengths for Winona Cotter. Well, with Megan Morgan in the lineup, I can see why.
Mayor Lutheran, let's see how they respond on this ATO. Getzko on a touch three. Comes up strong. Here's Williams. Kicks out. Bizons went through a couple of decisions. Megan Morgan got herself open down low. So maybe Bizon set herself up as a decoy. In any event, it's now a four point game. Megan Morgan up to 14. Mayor Lutheran stuck in a rut. Lily Wachholz hoping to get them out of it. An inside penetration set. Carnes with the dime. Wachholz, excuse me, Wachholz with the layup. She'll play at Iowa State for volleyball next season. Emma Lade, up, no good. Rebound is tipped in her direction, but she can't get the mid-range J to fall. Wonkoltz will give it a shot, no good. Another rebound, but that is denied by Killian. Winona Connor can't get the fast break play to fall, but they get an offensive rebound. Morgan in trouble, finds Bizons, and Bizons, a couple of times now, it looks like she squares up for a three-pointer. Well, Megan Morgan will take the three, got it. Three-point game. Morgan with three triples, 17 points. A good penetration by Mayor Lutheran as Wachholz speeds Carnes that time. So Mayor Lutheran getting a couple of buckets, but Megan Morgan coming to life offensively. And now she wants other teammates on the action. Sophia Sancork says, I can make a 3-2. And Mayor Lutheran struggled on the inbound, so Winona Cotter's going to get the ball back. They can take the lead on this possession. They trailed by 14. They were in big trouble. But Megan Morgan has dug them out of a hole in a big way. The Aquinas coaches are enjoying my narration. 29-27, <laughs> you just never know though with this sport, runs are gonna happen, so when you go down by 14, yeah, that's trouble, but still a long way to go. Winona Cotter can't score there. Gets go to Laid. The skip to Wackeltz inside. Mayor Lutheran finding some production in the interior. That could help them, but Winona Cotter using the three ball to strong effect. That shot partially altered by, from Williams. Mayor Lutheran has time still to get a shot off. Megan Morgan has other ideas. So Winona Cotter, they don't have the length, but they're using scrappiness and sharpshooting to compensate. Pat Bolin considered the Ramblers the underdogs in this matchup. They're not playing like it. That's good if it goes, it does not. Mayor Lutheran with the 31-27 lead, but Winona Cotter got it to within two. Megan Morgan, a big reason for that. Winona Cotter, their three-point shooting and their defense helping them fight off a 14-point deficit. Will it be enough to get the win? We'll have to wait and see, but you have to like the momentum that the Ramblers will have going into the locker room. And for Mayor Lutheran, they got some interior scoring in the last couple possessions of the first half. That could be key as they try to regain their bearings and steer the ship as they want to start their season with a win. We're back in a moment. You're watching the Twin Cities Thanksgiving tip-off at St. Thomas Academy. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. That's put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching.
We are on the air. All right, we did it. We, we got the power. We had the lights go out temporarily in pregame. And I was asking my buddy Sam, did you get that in your warm-ups? He said, maybe. Well, now we do. And the lights are back on. I don't know what's going on here. This is our first time at Schoberg Flynn Arena at St. Thomas Academy because uh, UST can't host anymore. We need one more set of lights if we can. So hopefully uh, we can figure out the lights so we don't run into this issue. I was going to say before the lights went out again and caused all sorts of havoc for a few seconds. Actually, playing basketball in the dark, I know, Sam, you have some basketball experience. That'd be a fun drill. That'd be a great way to pick up dribbling technique, just dribble in the dark, because all you have is your instinct and your <laughs> spatial awareness. Mary Lutheran leads Winona Cotter 31-27, but the Crusaders were up by 14. Winona Cotter able to close it within two, thanks to some three-point sharpshooting, especially from Megan Morgan. She has 17 points to lead all players. Emma Laid has 11 to lead the Crusaders, so we've got an interesting development. Dueling strategies playing out. Emma Laid starts the second half with the steal, and she'll shake off her coverage. Actually, her coverage will run right past her. They couldn't put the brakes on in time. Speltz and Williams and Laid got an easy two out of it. Some of the lights on that end of the gym are still off, but it's bright enough that we can play. 33-27 now is the score. And we have one more game following this one. Holy Angels in Roseville, and that will wrap up our coverage from St. Thomas Academy, Lily Wachholz gets the friendly bounce. Here's Megan Morgan. The star of the game so far, but still a long way to go. And this Mayor Lutheran team, they're used to adversity. Again, in the same section of Sleepy Eye St. Mary, Ava Killian with the dish to Megan Morgan, who knocks down the baseline, Jay. And Mayor Lutheran with a quick answer in transition. That's Julia Carnes, who had six points in the first half. Mayor Lutheran getting a quick bucket. Don't let the class designation fool you. This Mayor Lutheran team, they've got some speed, they've got some skills. And they set up a wall there against Sancork. Emma Laid can't finish in transition. Winona Cotter picks it up. They have numbers if they can get down there. Williams can't quite do it, but she finds a wide open Ava Killian. Her three is off the mark. And Sancork will scoop up the rebound. Morgan thought about it but decided to run a set instead. And it will pay off as she set herself up in prime position for the backdoor play. Sarah Spelt spotted her, and Morgan up to 21 points. 37-31, Winona Cotter gets the steal off the inbound, three on the way. Oh, that would have been big, but Williams comes up short. Mayor Lutheran on the other end with another quick answer. Julia Carnes wanted the foul, but the Crusaders get the fast break deuce nonetheless. Morgan able to escape. Another three, Sancor can't knock it down. Rebound, Danica Martin. We haven't called her name much yet. Martin has not scored, but that speaks to the depth of Mayor Lutheran where Danica Martin has a lot of praise and expected to do big things for the Crusaders, but hasn't needed to yet. But you've got some fine production out of Laid and Carnes. Mayor Lutheran, they have the eight-point lead, even though Megan Morgan 
That's going to be an illegal screen on Ava Killian. Megan Morgan with a dazzling performance, 21 points. Now we've got a man scramble for the ball. Mayor Lutheran draws the foul. Madeline Getzko looked like she tried to force it, but draws the foul, and that'll work out because that means free throws. Getzko had five points in the first half. And as we noted before, 9.8 points, 4.1 rebounds per game last year. One of the many volleyball and basketball crossovers at Mary Lutheran. And you're probably going to get tired of hearing me say that whenever we cover a Mary Lutheran game, but it speaks volumes to their athleticism and versatility. Playing multiple sports, and it's no different for a school like Aquinas, who we saw in our last game. They had a few multi sport athletes over the years. And Alyssa Williams knocks down the elbow J for her first field goal. Megan Morgan comes up with a steal. Winona Cotter able to hang in this game with their defensive capabilities on inbound plays. They won't get the save there. So uh, the Ramblers, I don't know if they'll get the win here, but their defensive tenacity on inbound plays is something that could carry them forward in the season. Again, Lake City, Goodhue, Rochester, Lauren, those are a few of the teams expected to do well in Section 1-2A. Carnes in trouble. One-on-one, -on -one, gets go, beats her coverage, and we'll have a chance for a three-point play. Madeline Getzko. Nine points. Can make it 10. And in doing so, becomes the third Mary Lutheran player to get to double digits. 44-33, and the Crusaders building their lead again. We saw this midway through the first half. Winona Cotter called the timeout, regrouped, and used three-point shooting to great success to get within two. So those of you who think Winona Cotter might be out of it yet, we still have some time and some games to play. Some plays to make, that is. Williams. Didn't like what she saw, so she kicks out to Morgan who knocks down another tray. Megan Morgan with four triples. On the other end, Mayor Lutheran, they've done that a couple of times. Lily Walkholtz cut her way inside and slices in a layup for the Crusaders. They still lead by 10, 46-36. Kata Thrynan lost it. Carnes is all alone. Thrynan catches up to her, but Mary Lutheran has some trailers. Oh, they leave it short. Danica Martin couldn't finish. Lily Wackoltz races in and draws the foul. So you're not gonna like the lack of efficiency on that play, but you are going to appreciate the hustle and the grittiness of Mary Lutheran to get after it. Never assume it's going in just because you have one-on-one -on -one coverage. Lily Wackholtz at the line for two. We told you about her volleyball acumen going to Iowa State. Plays sports with her right hand, but she writes with her left hand, so I think that would qualify as ambidextrous. She splits at the line. Mary Lutheran six of eight. 
And they lead by 11. Lilly had six points and six and six rebounds per game last year. And her ability to rebound and kickstart the transition game are accolades Chris Gustin admires most. 47-36. Air Luther over Winona Cotter. A Class A contender who has to deal with Sleepy Eye St. Mary's. Got a feeling that section will come down to those two. Crusaders break the press, and they'll get the finish. Riley Nuremberg didn't have the speed, per se, to outrun her coverage, but she had the angle, and that's all that mattered. Pat Boland calls a timeout. 49-36 to score, 11.55 left in the second. This was about the same time when we called the timeout after trailing by 14, and Winona Cotter was able to Get on a run. And a reminder that if you want to support long-lasting digital coverage, or as we like to call it, do-it-yourself ESPN coverage of your favorite athletes, just hit us up and consider sponsoring us on Patreon, PayPal, or Cash App. All the contributions go to our sports coverage so that we can provide you with as many games as possible. And we're gonna have several games coming your way at the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off at Hamlin University, the longest running holiday invitational, I should say Thanksgiving invitational starting in 2004. This event started in 2016 and didn't take long for it to grow. It began as a Catholic school invite. And then other teams got invited and here we are, 28 teams. Over two days, two teams from Wisconsin, a team from Iowa, and a whole lot of good basketball. We've seen some of that today. Winona Cotter got caught in a jam, almost got out of it. Well, they do get out of it. They get the turnover, deflection, but Megan Morgan was in the right place at the right time. But they leave Mayor Lutheran with an opening, another deflection, that's going to lead to a jump ball. And the arrow belongs to Winona Cotter. So, once again, getting a couple of stops here. That could prove vital. We still have a lot of time. But you like to see these teams make runs. Even if you're the underdog like Winona Cotter is, at least in the eyes of Pat Bolin. This is game one out of a possible 32 as Lily Wachholz was in position to finish down low. Megan Morgan, her pocket was picked and the Crusaders have a chance to extend the lead. Moss thought about it, draws the foul. You could hear that one, one of the uh, spectators alongside us. <laughs> you could hear it. We certainly could. Heads up play by Emma Laid. Won't get the baseline jumper out of it, but an offensive rebound. Laid bounced it off a of Rambler, and as you know in basketball, all you gotta do is bounce it off another player. And you can reclaim possession. Loose ball. Alyssa Williams sensed an opportunity and a nice transition set up with Megan Morgan, Sarah Speltz. It looked like she had nowhere to go and 
Maybe Mayor Lutheran thought they had her cornered, but Megan Morgan was there. Mayor Lutheran streaking down the other end, and they come up short on the layup. An opportunity for the Ramblers to work their way back in this. They trail by 11, 51-40. Turnaround, tough shot there. Spelts going up against Laid, and a dead ball rebound to Mayor Lutheran. Holy Angels in Roseville to follow. Full day of coverage at the Twin Cities Thanksgiving tip-off. The kickoff to our 2021-2022 basketball season, however long it is, on TSB television. And we're glad you can join us. We're happy for all of those who tuned in for our volleyball coverage. And we can't wait to see our basketball audience again for however many games we have. We hope to bring you the full season, but we'll play it as it comes. Play it as it lies, as the saying goes. That was a line from Happy Gilmore, play it as it lies. And uh, led to some hilarious, but uh, Im impossible scenarios in golf. But I digress, this is becoming a monologue and you're not here to listen to my monologues. You're here to watch Emma Laid bounce it over to Julia Carnes. She can't get the baseline J to drop. But another offensive rebound, and Avery Studer will shoot too. No notes on Studer, but I can tell you about Julia Carnes. Her nickname is Bird. I can't recall how she got that exactly. Three sport athlete, volleyball and track. And I know when I spoke with Julia and the Mayor Lutheran team for volleyball, that was a recurring segment, Julia Carnes and the nickname Bird. I don't remember the story exactly, but I'm sure they do. And when they watch this, they'll have a giggle or two about it. Studer splits at the line and Madeline gets go it's gonna get called for over the back. 52-40, Winona Cotter trying to work their way back in this. They've had a couple of opportunities to do so. Again, had a great defensive scheme, forcing turnovers on inbounds. Williams ran into a wall there. Three on the way. That was another ticket, but threes haven't been dropping outside of Megan Morgan so far. And Megan hasn't had a lot of opportunities for three-pointers, but she has racked up a lot of points, 28. And without her, Winona Cotta would really be struggling. Morgan works off the screen, but another defender may have gotten in her way and denied her a three-point look. Carnes had the advantage down low, but couldn't put it in. Spelts. Quick skips and a three ball. Killian can't find it from the corner. Rebound is tipped and Julia Carnes has it. And that's almost automatic. Gets go with the dime. Air Lutheran extends their lead to 14. Williams knocks down the three. Her first triple and a traveling call. Once again, Winona Cotter forcing stops, forcing turnovers with their inbound defensive formation. Almost lost it. Winona Cotter in a pickle. Megan Morgan forced into a tough shot. That deflection, I think the initial deflection really messed up the fluidity of Winona Cotter in that last possession. They just couldn't get anything in sync. And then a foul that sends Avery Studer to the floor. Seven. 
Winona Cotter in the penalty, so free throws coming for Danica Martin, who has not scored and will remain scoreless. Chris Gustin again has high praise and high hopes for her progression this season, and she certainly has a lot of time to do it, even if she doesn't score today. Mayor Lutheran is still up considerably. Winona Cotter hasn't been able to threaten, but not for lack of trying. They can get the hustle plays defensively and force turnovers, get stops. They haven't been able to consistently respond on offense. Struggling from three-point range here in the second half. And this is eating up time. Cotter doesn't have to hurry per se, but they can't take extended periods of time to try to find a scoring chance. But they'll take that one as Sophia Sancourt muscled her way inside, drew the foul, and still the chance for a three-point play with the clock stopped. I know it seems odd to say with six and a half to go, but when you trail and you can get those clock stoppages, that can go a long way. Hazelton will go in in place of Williams. Sophia Sancourt. to make this an eight-point game, and Mayor Lutheran player jumped the gun. That was Stella Moss. I'm sure she'll laugh it off. Tried to time it. Was a split second too early. So a do-over for Sancork, and that completes the three-point play. Morgan still out there. Mayor Lutheran in transition and Carnes was fouled, so she'll have to earn them at the free throw line. Shooting foul, so two free throws here. Carnes missing the front end. Winona Cotter might take that though, if you can get ones and zeros instead of twos. That's okay, well, they get the two points anyway because the rebound care right to Danica Martin and she handed it off to Walkholtz who put it in. So the Crusaders get two points the old fashioned way. It won't do much with their free throw percentage but you came away with points on that possession. That's what counts in the end. And that could be a back-breaking bucket. Emma Laid was poked from behind, but that could be a silencer with less than six minutes to play. Or at least contribute to one. Laid to Wackoltz. You bet. Lily Wackoltz, 15 off the bench, 11 in this half. She is now the leading scorer for the Crusaders. I think she must have seen me and said, oh, I know I can get, I know how to get interviewed by him again, or either that or she trembled in fear. But Mayor Lutheran has no fear defensively. They forced the five second violation. 58-46, and the Crusaders well on their way to pulling away. Winona Cotter, they've been in this game and Again, offensive consistency has eluded them, and you feel if they were able to get a few more plays, well, they get another stop defensively. If they've been able to find more on offense, well, they find a big one there. Three ball corner pocket for Alyssa Williams, and she'll have a chance to make it a four point play as she was fouled. Williams with eight points. And another lane violation. That's the second time Mayor Lutheran has been tagged with one, so another do-over. 
for the Ramblers. And the do-over pays off. So Winona Cotter getting a couple of points on the do-overs following lane violations. That makes it an eight-point game. And now the Ramblers sense an opportunity. They get the steal. And on the other end, Sarah Speltz was wide open. Now it's a six-point game. And so what could have been a backbreaker when Wachholz got the two points following the pair of misses from Carnes at the free throw line. The problem is Winona Cotter's in the penalties, so any foul sends Mayor Luther into the line, and they can't afford that. Danica Martin at the line. Mayor Lutheran still in one and one territory. And for what it's worth, they, had th they have three fouls to give. Martin misses again, but it will stay with Mayor Lutheran off the deflection. So the Crusaders have had a couple of lucky bounces go their way. But 508 and a six point margin is no certainty. Laid, yes. Looked like she had a tough angle, but she made it work. Morgan draws contact and will have a chance to score with the clock stopped at 4.52. Winona Cotter, two of three, because a couple of those three-point plays were makes after lane violations. Turn misses into points. No lane violations, so no freebies that time. Megan Morgan knocks them both down. Six-point margin again. Mary Lutheran on the run and a block by Ava Killian. Can the Ramblers come up with something? Williams looked like she was out of control. Tried to get after it, really, really wanted that bucket and it just didn't pay off. Might have been better if she had backed off, waited for help, but I can't fault her for wanting to make something happen when you're in striking range. Mary Lutheran misses down low. And they get bailed out again. Winona Cotter thought they had the rebound and unable to corral it. Spelt's going in for Hazelton. More pressure from Morgan. She pickpockets Nuremberg and that's gonna result in a steal and run out. 32 points for Megan Morgan, four point game. Mayor Lutheran tried to burn Winona Cotter on a fast break play and instead they throw it away. Four point game, Winona Cotter on two occasions looked like they were in big trouble. Both occasions so far, they have found an answer to at least have a shot at winning. This would be a big victory for the Ramblers if they could Pull off the upset. Not in any of the preseason rankings. At least not in the top 10 in any of them. But rankings are just a snapshot in time. It's what you put on the floor that counts most. An offensive rebound to Williams. Spelts. Emma Laid with the huge deflection. And the bucket. Lay with the defensive effort. She's up to 17. That is big for Mary Lutheran as they are having to fend off a feisty Winona Cotter team. But that's what you want to see. If you're Mary Lutheran, not every game is going to be a 20, 30 point win. How do you handle the games where things maybe don't go your way? And a nice set. The extra pass from Speltz results in a dime to Sancork. And Mary Lutheran coughs it up again. They keep feeding Winona Cotter freebies. 
And Pat Bolin will call a timeout. Mayor Lutheran a couple of times have tried to go the length of the floor in transition as of late and they end up turning the ball over. If you're Mayor Lutheran, at least from my vantage point, it feels like you should have the win close to locked up. Maybe you wouldn't want to say it's over when you're up 23-9 midway in the first half because you never know what can happen, but given the flow of the game, you would think Mayor Lutheran They've had some chances to put this one away. They go for the big plays. They take the big risks. It hasn't paid off. It's a little bit like those aggressive Jeopardy strategies from James Holzhauer or Matt Amodio. When it pays off, it's brilliant. When it doesn't, it can sting. And Mayor Lutheran has been stung a couple of times. That's not to suggest they should get away from that. But when you try those full court plays, you got to make sure you know who's running the routes. Again, a quick turnaround for a lot of these athletes who came over from volleyball. They did have the full two weeks of practice, but you gotta be careful because they have allowed Winona Cotter to stick around. And a big reason for that is Megan Morgan. 32 points. It will stay Winona Cotter ball. 32 points, but does she have enough in the tank? Winona Cotter playing shorthanded. Four players not available in this one. Nine is a certainly enough to get you through a high school game. Last touch by Wachholz, so Sancork bailed out there. 2.21 to go. A lot of time, but Winona Connor, you'd like to get a score on this possession. Oh, tough pass. And that is where Mayor Lutheran has come up clutch. Megan Morgan with the answer. Doesn't have the numbers to penetrate. Can Winona Connor find something on a set? Not quite. Timeout, Mayor Lutheran. Winona Cotter, they've struggled a little bit on the set plays here as of late. In transition, and when they were hitting threes for a while, that was a sight to see if you're a Winona Cotter fan. But right now, they just can't get past that final hurdle. Sixty-two fifty-eight, and a team we're going to see at the other invite, Hopkins, dismantle Como Park, 83-43. That score may not surprise you. Those two teams will play each other again. We're going to have that game for you as they square off on Tuesday. And we have our full schedule mapped out. We release it from month to month because, as we always say, things are subject to change, weather, virus potential, you name it. Nothing is a certainty. We've learned that in the last year and change. Two minutes to go in a tight one. Mayor Lutheran with the ball. They still have two fouls to give. And now they're in the double bonus, so free throws coming for Madeline Getzko. Getzko with 10 points. Williams with the third personal foul, and free throws coming for Madeline Getzko. We've had a pair of Entertaining games, one that went down to the wire with our out-state battle, out-of-state battle that is. And Lacrosse Aquinas and Dallin Catholic and Winona Cotter shorthanded giving Mayor Lutheran 
Everything they can throw at them. Getzko makes both free throws. That's going to help the cause. 64-58. And now that puts more pressure on Winona Cotter, who have struggled a bit in the half court. And once again, they come up short, just unable to find much down low in half court sets as of late. And Emma Laid, that could have iced it. Winona Cotter. Finds Megan Morgan for three. That was a play Winona Cotter sorely needed to go their way. These two teams won't see each other in state. Mary Lutheran in A, Winona Cotter in 2A. But a great tune-up game for both teams, Mayor Lutheran. Chris and every coach would tell you, if you're playing your best basketball in November, you've got a problem. I would not say Mary Lutheran has played their best basketball tonight, but you gotta start somewhere. And they've played well enough to get out of here with the win as Wachholz gets the front end and makes it a three possession game that should put Mayor Lutheran in the safe zone. Wachholz, 13 points in the second half, 17 overall. Her production, a huge factor in this one with Danica Martin unable to score. Wachholz coming in, this is her second sport. We know volleyball is her first. But that's why she plays and that is why Chris Gustin values her utility. Three no good. That should just about do it. Winona Cotter gave Mayor Lutheran everything they had. Had their half court efficiency on sets been higher, maybe it's a different story. Mayor Lutheran throws it away, but not enough time here. It's gonna come down to efficiency. Winona Cotter, I think they're not gonna be thrilled. It's gonna sting knowing they had a chance to win this game. But it happens sometimes. Megan Morgan can't hit the three, but she finishes with 32 points. And Winona Cotter still getting after it defensively. Morgan fakes the three, goes inside, and well, I'll have to correct myself. She won't finish with 32 points. She'll finish with either 34 or 35, pending this free throw. But Megan Morgan, what a performance from her. It's going to come up short, but that is the kind of effort you're going to bottle up, you're going to reference on the tape and say, you know what, we didn't play our best game, but we fought hard and we got 35 out of Megan Morgan. That could go a long way in their season. Morgan, no stranger to big numbers. 15.9, but 32 in your first game of the year. Will be a good building block, but it's Mayor Lutheran who gets the win. 66-61, the final. Emma Laid was 17, Lily Wachholz was 17, so two of the volleyball basketball crossovers hook up. I guess it comes naturally to them. They're used to pairing up in volleyball. They do the same in basketball. Good game for the Crusaders, a good effort by the Ramblers. It's Mary Lutheran who wins the day and starts their 2021-22 season with the win. We'll try to get a word with Emma and Lily before we wrap it up for this game. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Joining me are Lily Wachholz and Emma Lade. You heard these two and saw these two 
dish it up on the volleyball court on the way to a state championship. But you're not going to win a state title today. But the two of you got 17. Lily, 17 off the bench. You had a big second half. And even if basketball is your second sport, you stepped up big. So after that first half, what did you work on? What did you adjust to come up with a big performance? I think like we talked in the uh, locker room at halftime, just like using our size in the half court. So I think really that and putting effort into every play, not taking one playoff. What do you enjoy most about the crossover that you get? A lot of the volleyball athletes stick around for basketball. It means a quick turnaround, of course, because two weeks ago you were celebrating a volleyball title and the next Monday you've got to suit up for that first day of practice. What is that turnaround like and what excites you as you make that transition from season to season? Yeah, you know, it's definitely hard, but I think it's really like mentally, staying mentally strong, all of us, and all of us are comfortable with each other, so I think that definitely helps too, just staying strong with each other and knowing that we can push through. And it helps to have someone like Emma Laid, uh, whether she's setting you up on the volleyball court or dishing you assists. Emma, you've had quite the career at Mary Lutheran, quite the season, 2,000 set assists, and uh, you get 17 points today. I know basketball is a sport that you excel in, so... How exciting was it to get back out there for the first game of the year? It was a lot, of, really exciting. Like we were just preparing for it the last week and then the week before that, like or like this past week, and we were just all like ready to get this first game, like not in a sense over with, so we could see like where to work on and what we can improve on. Well, Winona Cotter certainly gave you a few things to work on. You got up by 14, 15 points. It looked like you were going to pull away. The Ramblers had a response, although in the end, you were able to limit their efficiency on set plays and respond with some quick buckets. So when, Winona, when Winona Cotter kept running at you, how do you make sure it doesn't overwhelm the senses? I would say just staying calm. Don't like those long passes that we were trying to throw. Just try to limit those. And like Coach said, only throw those if there's one person back there. Just being smart with the ball every time. Yeah, and it just shows like how deep we are on the bench. Like. Anyone can come off the bench and hit double digits for us. Like, it just shows how deep we are and how we're not in the best shape, but we're still pretty in good shape from volleyball. Well, your coach was telling me uh, earlier this week that if you were in your best shape now, there'd be an issue. So <laughs> this is game one. There's a long way to go. But uh, what do you think you learned from this game? And uh, how do you think that chemistry that you've built, whether it's playing multiple sports or just being with each other, nine of you are coming back. How do you think that can help you uh, later on this season? I think, our, like you said, chemistry is a huge part, just knowing each other well. I think we know who we, like, who, how we play with each other, so I think that's a huge part of our game, and it helps us a lot. Yeah, I feel like, like Lily said, just helps us a lot. Like, if I get down the court, I know Lily's going to be coming down the lane. If I get out wide, I know she's going to be coming down the lane. I can just dish it to her, and we can get easy buckets like that. And before we go, you want to say hi to anybody? Hi to my family and everyone out there. Yeah, me as well. <laughs> hi to our state champion football team. Oh, yeah. State champion volleyball, state champion football. Yeah, let's not leave out the football team. Yes. <laughs> so a lot to celebrate at Mary Lutheran. Hopefully you'll get to do the same in basketball, but a long way to go until then. Thanks for stopping by. Congrats on Thank the you. win, and uh, we'll see if uh, it's the start of something special, perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. Emma Laid and Lily Wachholz from Mayor Lutheran, and that wraps up our coverage from this game. We've got more from the Twin Cities Thanksgiving tip-off coming your way.